Hey, this is Kristen with Collision Hub, and we thought we'd stop and take a little bit of time, right, as we're going into SEMA to talk a little bit about social media management, implementation, and policy. We get a lot of questions from shops all over the country about what to do with their social policies, and one of the first questions we ask them before they even start their page is, what does your handbook say? What's your employee rules and guidelines? And then what's the communication plan that you put in place in the year? And it's probably nine times out of ten, Liz, that we just get this kind of deer in the headlight <laughs> look back. A yep. um, lot of interesting things come up lately in the news a lot of some suits that are out there and, and businesses that are looking at their policy so I thought it'd be a great time for us to stop and actually address in a video what is a social media usage policy absolutely Chris and I think that that is a, a cornerstone of being a healthy business in the social realm it's definitely key and it's something that Collision Hub is really focused on something that we definitely encourage all of our clients and our own business when we're looking at um, how to manage it as a team and how to manage it as individuals helps with safety and definitely helps with you know communication within and outside of your business so all right so really specifically for those shops out there that right now may have an employee handbook and sometimes we learned from earlier series this year that shops don't even have employee handbooks mm -hmm. but what is a policy how does a shop get one well basically a social usage policy is a structural form that talks about how you use social media what that voice is, is meant to be and what your company stands for when you're communicating on behalf of, of your brand so um, basically what I mean by that is that everybody in your company is the voice of your brand and especially with social media tools there are constantly people and members of your team talking about your brand representing your brand and really giving feedback around your brand and so you want to make sure that everybody on your team understands what it is you stand for, understands that they are a voice, and understands the impact of those statements and of that voice in the marketplace. Yeah, yeah, and here's the difference that's changed a little bit. Now, there used to be, you know, about five or six years ago, we did things where it was just blog entries and forums, and I could make up a name and say, I'm Tim the Body Man or whatever, and, and we had a lot of anonymity in this. Mm -hmm. We don't have that now in the Absolutely age of not. Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn. I can get to your profile really easily. So if an employee makes a comment, say, on a forum that's maybe in uh, a, an industry-related page, mm -hmm. it's really easy for me to click on that forum, and Facebook's not going to show me everything about them, but it's probably going to show me their name and where they work. Yeah. And that about section Absolutely. and now suddenly by making a comment on something I'm now made a comment on behalf of my employee Absolutely. and so that's a whole new realm of doing that mm -hmm. but it also has some applications if you're having a third party do your social media as well there's still a social use policy agreement that needs to be reached with those third parties mm -hmm. What are some other potential damages that social media interactions by employees and representatives can cause a business? Sure. Well, there are a couple of different things. First of all, just basic, innocent, personal use of social media, like Kristen said. Oftentimes, we forget that we're linked with our personal pages to our professional um, companies that we work for and associates in the industry. And it's really key that you understand that once you publish something on a social channel or anywhere in the internet realm, that that is permanent. Even if you delete it or back it up, it's there and it's going to be able able to come back up and, and potentially hurt you and a lot of times we underestimate the impact of social um, media and internet policy in general but social is central to communication with customers so potential damage situations um, for example the, in the New York Times recently there was an editorialist who actually commented on Twitter about a book review he didn't like and that uh, his way of handling that situation was really negative, it was condescending, and he did it without realizing he was actually representing the New York Times. And so that was a huge blow up for the New York Times, a PR scandal, and they actually had to issue an apology. It was really a negative situation. And so they had to go back and regroup and talk with their team about how to approach those situations. Because sometimes you do get personal attacks on, on a social channel, but when you respond, recognize you're responding as a professional. So um, anytime that you're using social tools, making sure that you understand not only who you're connected to and who you're representing, but the impact of the voice and the statements you're making is right. essential. And one of the things I always try to remind shops is, you know, if you go to any meeting, whether it's CIC or you go to your local Collision Repair Association meeting, you know, we always start those meetings by reading the antitrust guidelines. Mm -hmm. And social media can be a way of violating antitrust Definitely. guidelines. And sometimes shops go, what? I didn't even think about that, <laughs> right? Yeah. Posting pricing and operations and labor times or anything online or commenting in any forum about what mm -hmm. you're charging for pricing or anything yeah. online can be a potential violation. So some things you definitely want to check out with your attorney. We always recommend meeting with your local counsel as you sure. develop these policies. Sure, definitely. You know, um, like Kristen said earlier on, having a communication strategy to build from, having an employee handbook that you already have in place so your your team knows what your company stands for, what your, your brand guidelines are so that when they're stepping out they understand. And this applies, you know, a lot of times we talk about your team. This applies to those that 
are actual sanctioned representatives of your company on social channels and those that you wouldn't even think are representing you on a social channel and then also with third parties and we encourage when you're creating a social usage policy to detail all three of those roles because they're very different somebody who is just an employee is still representing you even if they're not sanctioned to do so so understanding the party line knowing what they're supposed to say um, and then definitely you know, sometimes we respond full on behalf of our company because we love our company. You know, you see a post out there, like for example, I see a post out there about Collision Hub and it's positive or negative, and I want to respond because I love who I work for. And you know, that can create some tension if I don't understand how to interact properly, I don't understand how to interface with a customer, or I just don't have the right language around what it is we're doing in the social space. Right, and that's a good point about having a communication strategy, which we mm -hmm. talk about is usually step one with the shops we're Absolutely working with. Step one. Because that's identifying who is the authorized spokesperson for yep. the company who can deal with media mm -hmm. inquiries who can respond to complaints or yep. whatever and making sure it's the same person all the time with a uniform yep. message is critical Absolutely. to success well and that's that chain of communication too you know if I get a question or if I get a customer coming to me approaching me on a social channel or I see something out there on a social channel that I need addressed it's important that I know who to go to in my company um, how to get that information to them and how to get it addressed in real time because we definitely don't want that lag while we're scrambling to figure out what to do. We need to have a chain of command so that people know who to go to when they have these situations come up. Yeah, now there's all kinds of forms out there on the internet. So you can you can bring in a company to help you develop your, your social media usage mm -hmm. policy. You can go out and find samples of social media usage policies out there that might fit your mm -hmm. business. But there's really basically two kinds. There's kind of the acknowledgement form where it just kind of spells out what we expect as a company and this employee would just acknowledge that they've read it. Yep. And then there's some more formal ones out there that actually even spell out what discipline actions would be taken sure. should you violate these policies and in what mm -hmm. order they'll be taken. Any recommendations on which form might be better for a repair? I mean, it depends on your business, definitely. If you're comfortable with your team and you feel like an acknowledgement form is something that would be safe within your, your organization, then that's definitely something we encourage. Um, sometimes it's a multi-tiered approach. Start with the acknowledgement and if you have trouble or you have some employees that you don't maybe feel as comfortable with, then shift to that um, more formal uh, version of the policy. Also, just talk with your leadership team. And if you already have um, you know, legal counsel employed, that's a great resource. Any business management that you're doing, that's definitely a place to start. So um, the, the really the key for a social media policy or a social usage policy is we want you and your employees to feel comfortable and safe interacting in a social realm. We all use those tools and they're core to how we communicate with our networks these days. And we don't want people to be afraid to go out and communicate but we also don't want them to, you know, communicate irresponsibly because they are representing our brands. Right, so. allowing your employees to communicate in the social realm around your business just amplifies your message mm -hmm. and the number of people that are talking Absolutely. about your business and reaching their friends. So there's mm -hmm. some value there, but then there's some considerations to make as well. So we strongly encourage you that you look Absolutely. into social media usage policies. Before you launch any pages, you should have it. And then if you already have some pages up, you're gonna wanna make sure that you take a little bit of time, mm -hmm. go back, review, get with your employees, make sure that you've got everyone mm -hmm. on board, and any third party handling your message, make sure they also understand your social guidelines and Definitely. usage policies. So Liz, thanks. Absolutely. Always. It's one of the things that the shops need to know the most right now. Okay. So we want to get that out there. If you have any questions, you can always reach us on the website, collisionhub.com. We're happy to answer any of those that you have. We'll even help steer you in the right direction of some firms out there that may be able to help you with your policy. So we'll be back a little bit later. We're going to talk about some news issues. Thanks. Thank you.